We are, are Telemon, and, and you are listening, listening to Black Squirrel Radio. Should we introduce ourselves? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, we are Telemon, and I am Dan Kersey, and I uh, do vocals and guitar. I'm uh, Paul Newton. I play lead guitar. My name's Dominic, and I'm the bass player. And I'm Massimo, and I play drums. Yeah. But drummer's not here right now. Well, okay, so Telemon itself hasn't been a lo around for a long time. It started off as a project between me and uh, the drummer, Massimo. And we were playing shows under the name Daniel. And it was just me and him, guitarist, drums. And uh, once we started recording, um, we started adding, you know, bass, guitars, cellos, piano. So we started adding more people to it. And that's when uh, Paul and Dominic came on. And it's really like, okay, let's change the name. So we changed the name. And I guess officially we'll be doing a, a show once we release the single on May 31st. And that'll be the first Telemon show. Tell them where it's at, Dan. I'm sorry? Tell them where the show is. Oh, yeah, the show is going to be at Musica in Akron. And we'll be playing with Kate Tucker and the Sons of Sweden. I think it'll be lively. Um, I think sometimes it can be categorized as acoustic, but it's definitely not. Um, I see there's like a lot of influences of uh, bands like uh, the Gaslight Anthem, Airborne Toxic Event, American Authors. I don't know if you guys have anything to add to that. No, you pretty much know that it's, mm -hmm. it's upbeat. Yes. Okay. <laughs> every minute. <laughs> I'm gonna say every That's minute. A nice long it's a constant <laughs> event in my head. Yeah, you know, I mean, the I think a lot of the music, like, I'll write, get in spurts, you know. Um, a lot of times I'll write stuff just to, like, I'll just have a melody in my head. So I'll just either hum that melody and then eventually come back to it and make it into a song. And I mean, usually I try to get the song to actually have a meaning to it. So sometimes there's music and then the song itself comes later down the, down the, down the road. I said, oh! I think it's pretty diverse. I mean, I mean, it really goes all around. I mean, I think I've got friends in every genre. I mean, you can really go to a hardcore show and then down the street you can go to like a funk or soul show. And I mean, you got things like all over the place. I mean, I think it's pretty good. The opportunity's right, right? Right, I mean, you know, sure. to see where it goes, you know, I mean. Right now we're just having fun. Right. Just enjoying, enjoying one day at a time. I <laughs> know. <laughs> Very far underground. Very. I, I probably wouldn't hide them far underground. I would probably... There's some houses I see boarded up. I'd probably hide them in there. There's a black squirrel right there. Yeah, I'd share them with everyone anyway. Yeah, I would. I'd probably <laughs> share them. So, uh, yeah, you know, I'd put them in a secret spot, but tell some people about it. If they want some of my nuts, I guess. Um, I guess I'll go first. Yeah. Um, my favorite place to play in the <coughs> area would probably be Musica. I, it's just like a really chill um, atmosphere, and I mean, it's pretty much almost just about every genre that plays there, and it still sounds good. Um, I don't know, I've usually just stayed within state, really, with all the groups I've played in. Um, and the farthest place I've played away is uh, Cincinnati, small clubs down there. Yeah, my, my previous band, we played in Traverse City, Michigan. Uh, that was probably, I think it was about 800 miles. But it was awesome, awesome. Right on Lake Michigan. It's totally cool. Yep. Oh, 
It depends what kind of grilled cheese it is, I think. I always think it depends what kind of taco Yeah, I mean, it depends where you go to get this grilled cheese. I mean, if it was just making a grilled cheese at home, probably a taco. Yeah, but if it had, you know, bacon, tomato on it. Yeah, or if you, like, went to melt. Mm -hmm. I mean, it would probably, a melt grilled cheese would probably be the taco. Uh, if you're talking about a taco from uh, Chipotle, they'd be pretty big. Round away, no pain, no more. Well, we're actually going to release a single on the 31st. Oh, okay. It's, and uh, DP will be shortly afterwards. I mean, everything's done, but, you know, we're just going to space it out a little bit. Um, I guess really what I'm, I'm most excited about is just, you know, seeing people's reaction to it. Because, um, I mean, I'm really proud of it. I mean, it started off where it was literally going to be an acoustic guitar and drums in the background, and it changed dramatically. So, I'm just... Excited for that. Take it from a garage band to an orchestra. Right. Overnight. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's basically a, like a mini orchestra uh, than what it was. So. What is your favorite part of songwriting? Uh, I like melodies. I don't know. I mean, having the whole finished product is always nice. I mean, obviously, but I mean, personally, I just like making catchy melodies and I think all that. I think the nervousness of, of the whole writing process itself, not knowing what's coming next, just the the the, uh, the things that are created out of just simple jams. Right, make a little mm -hmm. tweaks. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Just, just mistakes, beautiful mistakes. Yes, because you never know what's uh, gonna happen. You can just be messing around and come up with something sweet. Mm -hmm. Totally. No, when I Someone else go because I'm going to think about There's this because I've got that I'm really yeah. excited about so far this year. I mean, I, I my musical taste is kind of all over the place. I, I really dig Bruno Mars. I think a lot of his stuff is is just really really good. I don't I don't know if he's come out with a new disc in 2014, but I'd say he's one of the one of the, the coolest up and coming musicians of uh, up today, but. Um, 2014, that's, oh, that's a tough one. I know, because time just flies by so fast. Mm -hmm. right. My first answer I mean, would have been handwritten Gaslight, but, but that, that was last year. Yeah, that was. I know I was going to say something to do with the Gaslight Anthem. Um, I just went and saw um, American Authors and Wild Cub the other week, and I guess that, that was something. I mean, I don't know if I would say that's, like, you know, my favorite thing at the moment, but it's something that's kind of stuck in my head, because it was, like, one of those bands that I was listening to right before the show and I was like kind of iffy about it but then like once I saw them live they gave me like a whole different experience and then after listening to their album after that it was kind of gave a whole different direction and I'm usually always finding new stuff though mm -hmm. it always seems to be that during the summer for me like going to festivals and all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. or just something that I randomly find Fun. As long as the four of us are having fun, that's all that really matters, bottom line. Yeah, yeah I guess so. Big and famous, that's, that's <laughs> a huge plus. But. No, I mean, I, I love playing outdoors, and just, I don't I mean, a lot of the times it doesn't even really matter the place. Cause, I mean, sometimes you'll play a show and you'll kind of be like, oh, this is not going to be as that cool. But, I mean, sometimes those are the, the cool shows, and... Like the people you meet, the other bands that you're playing with that you meet. I mean, that's exciting. And uh, yeah, there's also times. I mean, some of the smallest shows make the best shows too. Mm -hmm. You know, just a handful of people there, and, and uh, just nice the nice personal side of things. But playing playing Bonnaroo would be cool too. Playing uh, just about anything would be cool. Mm -hmm. Just playing is cool. Yeah, you know. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, this is kind of hard because I mean the whole EP is uh, oh, man it, it's a dedication to my parents so I mean some of them are upbeat so I mean they could work in something some of them are kind of depressing so I mean you probably wouldn't want to use that in a commercial 
Um, unless there's like a commercial for a funeral home or something. Yeah, uh, no, they're not that really depressing. No, no, they're not that depressing. <laughs> I know. That, I mean, there's. I don't know. Just, we'll, leave it, just, we'll leave it up to the listener. Yeah, just, just stick it in a random commercial, like for, like one of Chipotle's new commercials. They'll have the little animations going on, and then. It'll be a song that doesn't fit, but why not? Just use it anyways. Let people think it's really deep and they need to think about it. I, yeah, that's... Well, like I was saying before, it was... I mean, the whole thing is a dedication to my parents. Um, it started off um, when my dad passed away in '09. I started writing songs uh, that kind of dealt with that. And then after that, um, it just kind of went forward, and I started writing songs about my mom, who ended up having a stroke a couple of years later. So it kind of just like went like kind of full circle with that, just with uh, different stories about them. And I didn't want to make it depressing because that's kind of what it ended up being. And I'm like, you know, those are cool every so often, but. I was like, okay, we need something a little more upbeat, so I started doing some happy stuff. And the album turned out, it's, it's upbeat, it's mm -hmm. happy. It's, it's, it's a really roller good. coaster of emotions. Uh -huh. I mean, even the songs that I guess lyrically might be the most depressing, I think might be the most energetic songs. I mean, because why not? Mine right off the bat would be Les Claypool. For sure. <clears throat> I actually had a dream. So I'll just go with this. I was I was at a hotel and um, Paul McCartney was there and he was just hanging out in this little tiny circle, this wooden stage, and he was playing up there and he like knew me like I was somebody. So I like, he was like, hey, Dan, why don't you come up on stage and play some songs? So we did. And I woke up and it wasn't real. That was kind of depressing. And you were kind a depressing song? Out. I was a little upset. But no, I think someone like that. I mean, I'm sure I can think of some other ones, but I mean, I've always been into the Beatles and that. So I guess since he's alive, I wouldn't mind playing in front of him. That would probably be Jimmy Page. He's one of the most innovative guitarists that I've heard in a long time. I mean, he's done a lot of things that no one had ever thought of before. <laughs> 